Hey, I'm Laurel and you're watching ESC Fan TV and I am performing in this year's Melody Festival in 2023 with the song Sober. A Eurovision and National Final stalwart song songwriter, but this year competing as a singer, it's Laurel. How are you, Laurel? Hi, Elliot. I'm really great. How are you? I'm fantastic. You say busy day, but loving every moment of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. ah! <laughs> so... I think I need to start with, obviously, your name is somewhat synonymous in Eurovision as a songwriter. What made you want to compete as a singer this year? Were you approached? Did you think, no, this is my moment? Like, how did this all happen? Well, I went straight up to the head of delegation and I said, I need to be in this. Enough, enough. No. <laughs> no, I, um, I've been watching and observing my artist career kind of unfold on this really crazy journey. Um over the last couple of years. And, uh, and then, yeah, I was, I was, there were some, there were some conversations around Melody Festival. And so I could kind of see the train coming. And then eventually I was, I was approached. I was asked um, if I would consider, you know, being a part of the show as a performer. And um, I've really been on this intuitive journey of saying yes and um, not yes to everything, but yes to the things that I really feel are right for me. And so I, um, I did a lot of thinking and, and talking to people that I trust about, you know, my why for doing this. And, um, and I said, yes, yeah, I'm really excited to be part of it. It's, it's a huge honor as a Canadian, you know, it's just totally wild. So, yeah. Well, it wouldn't be the first time a Canadian's performed at Eurovision. It wouldn't be the first time if anything's going to happen to Canadians won at Eurovision. So who knows what can happen? <laughs> Anything can happen, and I, I firmly believe that, you know, um, so I'm certainly not discrediting my own um, journey on Melody Festival. Um, but yeah, like I'm, I feel like I already won because I am so, so fortunate to be part of the show and, um, and knowing how many Swedes would love to have this spot. I just really want to like do well by it, you know, and really like honor that, that um, chance, you know, to, to bring a good performance. Amazing. So as I said, like you are synonymous with Eurovision and Melody Festival, and this is your sixth consecutive year competing in some capacity. Obviously you started with Lynn Ida and all the feels amazing song, I must say, but this is also this year, your eighth and ninth song competing with yourself and Mulia Sir. Just in a grand game as a songwriter, how does it feel that year after year, your work is constantly being appreciated and picked up by SVT and the Swedish public in general. Um, I feel really lucky. I mean, any songwriter um, goes through a crazy, they, they just know that part of their job is, is going through this crazy journey of experiencing so many yeses and so many noes in their career. And so um, while you learn to be emotionally detached from the outcome of um a song or whether it gets cut here or not or whatever. Um, it's always really exciting when you, when you see your song um, have the chance, especially on the mellow stage to, um, to be produced at such a high level, uh, especially live. Like that's very unique. So, um, so that's, that's really um, a wonderful thing. And um, I feel very fortunate to write with certain people who are, you know, just extremely talented and that, have a way of getting their songs noticed year after year. And so speaking of that, so your, your song Sober, you've done, done that alongside Anders Werthel, Angela Storn Johansson and Thomas Steingard. Thomas Steingard's also one you've worked with before, Eurovision also, these are names that also worked on the Starlings entry with you with Rollercoaster. So mm -hmm. how is it to work with them as well? Because obviously Anders Werthel and all three of them are say very big names in Sweden and also mm -hmm. Again, how is it like, say, to work with them and have this song go forward with this team? As it because it's almost like the four of you or three of you now come almost as like as a package deal on the songwriters every year. It seems like, yeah. So um, there, we we've, we've actually written like so many songs together that no one's heard, and um, I think one publisher heard some of those songs. We we've just been really focused on being as weird as possible, which is funny when like some of our more mainstream songs get cut <laughs> because this publisher has coined us non generic. So um, that's kind of our, our little, that's our hashtag. <laughs> um, and there are other um, writers that have kind of floated in and out of that constellation too, but that's like the main constellation. And um, 
you know, since um, re re since releasing my first single again as an artist, we've kind of really just tried to keep writing for me. Um, and of course, not every song is going to be for me. Um, but having having um, these guys like in my life, they all live really close by to where I'm based here in the south of Sweden. And so, I mean, they're really like brothers, like they're such close friends and they all have such an amazing set of skills that like so many of those skills overlap and then so many of them are specialized. And so as a team, I feel like um, it's just such a, you never know what we're gonna write because um, <laughs> we go from everywhere from like musical theater, Disney to like Brian Adams rock to wild K-pop. And, uh, and of course like DJ, like, you know, Burning Man land. So like, it's just really, it's just really fun to work with this team and to have them so close by, like, and to just, I mean, I'm really in awe of their talent. So yeah. <laughs> Well, that sounds like a very fun writing session in the afternoon. If anything and everything is possible, I'm just going to say that. It's mostly so... talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not exactly right, so like, it is a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, obviously, we haven't heard um, a single note of your song, Sober, yet. Obviously, because we yeah. can't yet, not for a few more weeks. <laughs> so, from what you are allowed to tell us about getting a slap on the wrist from SVT, how would you describe Sober? What can we expect Um yeah, because I said, like, you're known as a songwriter, but this is now as your singer. What mm -hmm. can we expect from you in a few weeks' time? Yeah, so um, Sober is very, very playful. It's very trippy, and it's very, very bratty. At least I feel bratty when I'm singing it. I think it's just, uh, like, a lot of fun, you know? And um, it's, like, definitely the song I want to bring to Mello. It's definitely, like, it's very me. And... Um, I think I'm kind of all of those things. And um, and to be able to bring a song that's just like really my personality to the stage, I feel like just super open about it. Like this is an invitation for people to kind of step into my world and um, to, yeah, just experience um, what they're going to experience and or maybe experience my experience of the song. And um, the song itself is about um it's called sober that's obviously a very like serious topic sobriety um but i feel like it's been packaged in this really fun kind of story in a way where you know i'm getting ready for this big night out with my friends and um it's like essentially just a, a song about looking for looking for a feeling that you could never find in the substance and um and finding that in in some thing or someone else instead and so that's that's really like this this it's it's a very fun conversation that is taking place in the song and um i like it a lot because the more i think about the song the more i think about how this is a song for the party kids but it's also a song for people who have chosen sobriety that want their party song too. So this is really like a, I feel like this is, a, at least I'm hoping that that's how it's received um, because it, it uh, it's, I know it's a very touchy word and, um, but I, I, I'm really comfortable with like how we're presenting this. So yeah, it's, it's, I'm very excited. Like I'm just so, I'm so stoked on it. Like I really, really, really am. And I'm like, I'm pretty high standards. So I'm like, I hope it's as great as I like think it's gonna be. <laughs> Ah, we'll see. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it will be, and I'm sure it'll be a great fun three minutes on stage. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to ask, obviously, at the end of the day, this is a competition to an extent um, for 28 artists. How competitive are you, and how far do you want to take the song in Melody Festival and, and if further Eurovision? Well, to be completely honest, I feel like I've already won. I feel like thousands of artists in Sweden want to be on this show, and I am one of the lucky people who has been given a spot. And so for me, like the outcome of this is so, uh, it's something I'm really not like attaching my identity to for sure. Um, but even like the thought of representing Sweden in Eurovision, like it literally hasn't entered my mind um, because I just, I just wanna do my best and whatever that looks like, like I think just being a songwriter and like even with being an artist too, you're throwing songs out there and you literally have no control over how they are received once they're out you can do your 
best to like present them the way that you want to, but how people react. And especially this year with it being just a public vote, like, I mean, I, a part of me is of course thinking like, who's going to vote for the Canadian, you know, like, why would you? Um, so of course I have like those types of thoughts or expectations. And then at the same time, I think, well, maybe it's different. Like, but at the end of the day, like I just, you know, my expectation of the competition is to do my best, to, 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 to better my best and to cheer on my friends who are in the same round to like do their best, you know, and for us to just like leave that night, super proud of what we threw down on the stage. And um, yeah, I just want to feel like we're all winners. Like I literally really do. And maybe that's like a Canadian thing too. Like everyone is awesome and everything is awesome. And I really do feel though that like, that's, that's my goal with this competition is to just really, really like, I'm just pushing myself to just bring something great. And so I just really hope that I, that I do. Fantastic. So if we just circle back to 2019, you did something that is very rare in Eurovision, which is you had three songs competing for Germany, myself, United Kingdom and Switzerland. And yeah. Switzerland got their best result since 1993 with fourth place with Luca Hani. Yeah. As a songwriter and I say, having done that song from start to finish and watching that result, how crazy must have that been for you when you saw the result that Luca pulled out in Tel Aviv? It was you know, like talk about an honor, right? Like it's just, it was just so um, cool to be part of something that um, that Switzerland could be so proud of, you know? And as, a, as an artist myself, like I get super, super invested in other artists' journeys. And so it's, it's either like hilltops and valleys for me as a, as a writer who totally feels everything they're going through because I've been through it too. Um, and when you can't, when you don't have control over everything, it's so frustrating. <laughs> Anyways, I just, everything about the Swiss delegation, like just the way they created that number and carried its hand, like held its hand the whole way to that position, um, to that result. Like it was so intentional. It was so like, they were gunning for like a win, you know, and they really have so much to be proud of and they did everything that they could to like they listened to the right feedback they you know chose the right people to create this number and they chose an amazing artist who they knew could deliver on stage and like Luca is the best he's so nice he's so talented um I had the chance to see him um in a outdoor arena just a few months ago um in in the fall in September sorry and um it was just, I, I saw him perform again. And I was like, you're just world-class. Like he's just awesome. So yeah, it was, a, it was an amazing time to see that happen. Fantastic. Well, just one last thing I want to ask you, Laura, before I let you go, cause you've got a very busy day is what would you like to say to everyone who has supported you on your songwriting journey and who will be supporting you Melody Festival in this year? What would you just like to put out there before your heat in February? I just want to say thank you so much for being with me on this ride, for being here, for like noticing and for being invested in, I'm going to cry, in my, you know, in my like hustle. Like, I feel like a lot of you have like seen me like pushing forward. And um, I feel like a lot of you understand how hard it is to be a songwriter and how um, when people are saying that songwriter shouldn't be doing this or that or whatever, it's like, I don't think anyone gets the grind that like, songwriters work for free like every song we write and so it's just so wonderful to have so many of you reaching out to me wishing me luck and um and being into like what I'm doing because like I'm bringing a very different flavor than like I feel like <laughs> of course every artist thinks that <laughs> but I'm bringing a different flavor or at least I'm like really trying to bring my authentic self and um and so I'm just so thankful that you're like receiving me as an artist too and like really vibing with me like it's something that I just like want more of I want to connect more with you and um I want to invite you into my world even more and share more with you so this is a way that I get to and it's just so fun for me so thanks for being here well and thank you for being here as well Laurel thank you so much for giving us your time I'm sure you'll be fantastic in Sweden that everyone is Laurel infamous at this point Eurovision national songwriter with her song Sober competing in the third semi-final Melody Festival and best of luck Laurel we will be championing you all the way to the final and who knows maybe Eurovision you never know <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, you.